Have you ever wondered if you have one of the rarest badges in Apex? There are 353 badges in the game, but today we're going to be covering the 31 rarest badges in Apex Legends, some of which were near impossible to achieve. But first, a huge thank you to Opera GX for saving my RAM and sponsoring this video. Are you like me and need to keep a million tabs open just to make sure that you don't forget something? Are you on a Chrome browser that just eats up all of your RAM and absolutely demolishing your FPS in game? Thank Thankfully, the GX control panel allows you to set just how much CPU or RAM that you're willing to let the browser use, keeping Opera GX light, even if you have hundreds of tabs open. There's also a network limiter, which allows you to limit the bandwidth that every Opera tab uses, saving your network bandwidth to where it matters. Think fast, <laughs> Sorry about that. I accidentally opened Google Chrome again. Opera GX actually has a feature that allows you to force dark pages wherever you go. No more flashbangs whenever you want to open your browser. Not only that, but Opera GX also has Discord and Twitch support, meaning you can log into your Discord account and communicate with your squad during the game and keep up with your favorite streamers. You will receive notifications in the browser whenever a streamer goes live directly from the sidebar. And of course, keep an eye out for the GX Corner. This keeps you up to date with free games, the newest releases, and gaming news all in one place. You can decide what you want to keep up with in the calendar. What's better is that you guys in the Otter Gang have an exclusive place in your GX corner. That's right, you'll be able to always keep up with the 12 of my latest YouTube videos right here in your browser, but only if you install by downloading Opera GX using my link in the description. Let's get the obvious ones out of the way early. Every season has their own unique ranked badge for Master and for Predator players, and you are eligible for a Master badge at the end of the season if you hit Master at one point during a split and eligible for a predator badge if you finish in the top 750 of players in one split. If you manage to finish in the top 750 both splits out of a season, you will get an animated version of that same badge. So there are up to 1500 unique static predator badges released every season and up to 750 unique animated ones. But let's be honest, there are way less than 750 players who hit predator in both seasons. The year one anniversary badge is a way to commemorate the Apex OGs. This comes in three levels. The tier 1 badge was awarded to players who played in the first year of the game's release, the tier 2 badge was awarded to players who played in the first month of the game's release, and the tier 3 badge, the rarest of them all, was only awarded to the ones who played the game within the first week of its release. You can get the Quartermaster Android, the Striker, the Holo Star, Making Waves, Lone Bot, Venomous, Tormentor, Angel Struck, Feeding Frenzy, and Founder badges by purchasing the relevant edition of the game. They're considered rare because who pays for that? Some of these have been on sale as part of packs in the store, but that happens very rarely. Similarly, the Origin Access badge is only available for EA Play members. EA Play is a paid subscription starting at $4 a month and used to include a battle pass, but they suddenly stopped doing that without warning anyone and I lost thought on the reactive scout skin and I'm still not over that. The Teamwork badge comes in four different tiers and it requires you to get a certain amount of kills per team to unlock. The lowest tier requires you to get 3 kills per team member, and the highest one goes all the way up to 10 kills per member for a total of 30 squad kills or more, and as such is dubbed the 10th and 10 badge. You can still get this anytime that you'd like, but the sheer difficulty of pulling it off makes it very, very rare. While we're at it for difficult but still obtainable badges, let me give another worthy mention to the baller badge, which you can unlock by owning 125 legendary items, and long shot, which requires you to knock an enemy over 300 meters away. That's not necessarily that hard on its own, but I wanted to mention it as it also serves as a tracker and will tell you the farthest knock you've ever gotten if you hover over it in the loadout screen. Another obtainable and probably the hardest active badge to get in the game would have to be the Impress Me badge, which levels up depending on your arena's win streak. The final evolution of this badge is only awarded to players who have won 100 arena games in a row. And yeah, I consider this more difficult than hitting Predator, sue me. Keep in mind though the Impress Me 100 win streak badge looks a little bit like the other Impress Me badge, which was a awarded to players who completed the Pasco challenges back in Season 8. Players would find a keycard when opening a care package in game. This keycard would appear on the main menu and would be activated if you interacted with it. After that, players had to find 3 holo sprays per map scattered all around the maps. They weren't really that hard to find and there were 15 holo sprays per map. This event award shows your current arena's win streak if you hover over it. The Horizons Test Subject Badge was awarded to players who completed the Horizon challenges when she was first teased in the end of Season 6. At the start, there was 
caused this odd looking screen in the firing range and interacting with it would start the event and require the player to deal 10 damage midair, get 10 knockdowns and outlive 120 opponents. So it wasn't that big of a deal. After finishing these challenges, the player would return to the firing range and grab a gravity lift key card. This key card allowed a player to activate gravity lifts that were scattered all around King's Canyon and World's Edge. In the first week of the event, players could activate gravity lifts on airbase and repulsor on King's Canyon and refinery and skyhook on World's Edge. In week two, players could activate the gravity lifts on the cage and watchtower north in King's Canyon and the lifts in train yard and sorting factory on World's Edge. And finally, on the last week, week three, players could activate the gravity lifts on artillery on King's Canyon and fragment west within World's Edge. These gravity lifts obviously had tactical advantages and actually were decisive in some end games. Players who had activated all of these challenges could return to the firing range and once again interact with the screen to be rewarded with the Horizons Test Subject badge and the charm. Another event-based badge is the Imperial Badge. This badge was available for every legend that was out during the Iron Crown event back in what, Season 2 and was awarded to players who won a game of solos on that specific legend. But the Respawn has been very clear that they aren't planning on bringing solos back in any way, shape or form, so this badge will probably never make a comeback. And who can forget Elite Q? I've mentioned Elite Q a few times on this channel already, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed, you definitely should. But for those unaware, Elite Q was a special Q all the way back where you had to place in a top 5 of a normal game to be eligible to join. The Elite Q games only consisted of players who had previously placed in a top 5, and if you placed in a top 5, your streak would continue. Elite Q had the same rules as normals, except the ring did a lot more damage and closed way faster. Your highest streak would be recorded on the Elite Q streak badge, which is this one. Something even rarer and incredibly hard to pull off back then was the Elite 888 badge. This badge was only awarded to players who managed to win 8 games in Elite Q with 8 kills per game on all 8 different legends, and only 0.003% of players have it, making it probably one of the rarest badges in this video. During the anniversary event back in 2021, the normal playlist was taken over by Locked and Loaded, meaning that every player spawned with a Mozambique, a Shotgun Bolt, HCOG, 2 cells, syringes, and white gear, meaning the only loot in a loot pool was blue and above. Players who did 102 2816 damage with the Mozambique during this event received the Mozambique badge. Moving on, here are two ALGS badges. There's the honorable mention, which you'd get by watching at least two hours of the ALGS finals in 2022, which is somehow pretty rare, more rare than apparently half of the badges in this video, I assume because not that many people ended up tuning in. And then there's the ALGS participant badge, which is awarded to any player who has played in the ALGS, including the qualifiers. This does mean that you too can get the ALGS badge just by signing up and playing at least one match of ALGS. You're eligible to sign up just by being silver or above, so hey, free badge, right? Next up is the Respawn Entertainment Developer Badge. This one is kind of self-explanatory. It's a badge granted to all developers. But fun fact about this, most of the death boxes dropped by flyers or that are placed on the map are actually developer boxes with the badges on or have the names of players that Respawn wanted to commemorate. Monster is back at it again with another collaboration, but it turns out that this collaboration does doesn't include the badge which was available in the 2021 collaboration. Back then, users would have to purchase one monster and redeem a code on Monster's website to get access to the level 1 version of the high energy badge, along with some skins and battle pass levels along the way. The highest level being at 45 cans for the level 5 version of this badge. And I've saved the best for last because next up are the most egregious badges on this entire list, and these are probably the rarest out of all the badges on this list for the difficulty alone. So some of these following badges are rarer than the developer badges and are so rare that they're displayed as 0% pick rate in the Apex Cosmetics Tracker. These free badges were awarded to the most diehard season 1 grinders, with the most unrealistic goals I've ever seen in a battle pass in any game. Bold stomp. Keep in mind all of these badges could only be achieved in the first season of the game, which was about 3 months long. The highest level of these badges were all animated, which is cool I guess. These badges went from tier 1 to tier 5, getting more crazy per tier, the first one being the Glory Seeker badge. The tier 1 version of this badge required you to achieve a top 5 squad standing, one time with 7 different legends. Easy enough, right? But in order to get the level 5 version of this badge, the player needed to achieve a top 5 squad standing 50 times with 7 different legends, meaning they'd have to place in a top 5 in 350 different games, assuming they never died. And if you think that sounds challenging, wait until you hear about the Wild Frontier Champion. It's the same, except instead of placing top 5, you had to win! You had to win! 
350 games in one season. And if you thought that was bad, wait until you hear about the worst badge of them all. This badge required an insane amount of time to pull off, and to make matters worse, your own performance had very little effect on your outcome. We're talking about the bonus round badge. The first tier of the bonus round required you to earn 250,000 battle pass points with seven different legends. And the second tier required you to earn 250,000 battle pass points with nine different legends. As with the other challenges, no, these did not combine per legend. If you wanted to max this badge out, you'd need to grind a total of 2,250,000 battle pass points during the season. One Redditor did the math and found that you'd need 162 hours of survival time alone just to unlock the tier 1 version, spending roughly 23 hours and 8 minutes per legend. Keep in mind, this is raw survival time and it doesn't affect dying, load times, menu times, etc. If we assume 1 minute of waste per 5 minutes of gameplay, you can expect to play the game for 250 hours in one season if you want to reach the level 2 badge, which would require you to do about 2 hours and 45 minutes of grinding per day, but that's not necessarily playing or enjoying the game. And you're probably wondering, who the hell would do these insanely long time wasting grinds? You bet your sweet ass that I did. If you watched this video, you probably enjoy rare stuff, so check out the rarest animation in the game by clicking on the video on the screen. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.